Hi, welcome to Danny After Dark. If you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a notification or a new episode. Tonight, I'll be featuring the case of John List. So let's go ahead and find out more. Let's go ahead and dive on in. John Emile List was born September 17th, 1925 in Bay City, Michigan. In 1971, John had murdered his mother, his wife, and their three children in their 18-room home in Westfield, New Jersey. He laid the bodies neatly in the ballroom of their home. He arranged photos and books he borrowed from neighbors on a nearby table, and then he disappeared. Well, what happened? What caused this in the first place? And where did he disappear to? Well, let's go back and figure out how this happened. John was always described as an aloof, cold man with very few friends. He was the only child to strict German parents. His mother in particular was very domineering and overprotective. He was a devout member of the Lutheran church and taught Sunday school. He served in the army during World War II and was later given an ROTC commission as an army lieutenant. For his education, John attended the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, where he earned a bachelor's degree in business administration and then went on to earn a master's degree in accounting. However, John's lack of social skills caused him many problems. Most notably, it resulted in him having a history of losing his jobs. Well, John's family included his wife, Helen, 45 years old, his children, Patricia, 16 years old, John Jr., 15 years old, and Frederick, 13 years old. John's mother, 84-year-old Alma, also lived with the family. November 9th, 1971, the day started by John first shooting his wife in the back of the head. He then killed his mother by shooting her once in the left eye. This all happened while the kids were at school. Well, eventually the kids were gonna come home from school. Patricia and Frederick came home first. They were instantly shot in the back of the head. John Jr. was playing a soccer game that afternoon so what John did was he made himself some lunch and then drove to watch his son play soccer. Well, after the game, the two of them drove home. Once they got back to the house, John pulled a gun on John Jr. and shot him in the back of the head. Well, John Jr. started to twitch. His father assumed he was having a seizure. So he shot him again. It was later determined that John Jr. had been shot at least 10 times. After that murder, John then dragged his dead wife, his dead children, onto sleeping bags into the ballroom of their 18-room Victorian home. He left his mother's body in the attic, which was her apartment, and he later stated in a letter to his pastor that, quote, mother is in the attic. She was too heavy to move, end quote. In the letter, John also claimed that he had prayed over the bodies before he later went on the run. The day after the killings, John went through the home and gathered every single family photo. What he did was he tore his image out of every single picture so that the police would have nothing to use if they were to make wanted posters. Then he drove his car to the John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York. He left his car there as a false lead and then took a bus into the city. The deaths of the family and their bodies were not discovered for over a month. Well, how? The family had a history of mostly keeping to themselves. Most importantly, John covered his tracks he sent notes to the kids' schools that they would be out of town for several weeks in visiting family in North Carolina. He wrote his job that he would not be there for several weeks. 
he stopped the family's milk, mail, and delivery of their newspaper services. The lights had been on in the home nonstop. That wasn't exactly normal, but the neighbors didn't question it. In these type of communities, people just kept to themselves. Well, one of the children's teachers, Patricia's trauma teacher, eventually grew concerned. Something just wasn't right, and she decided to drive to the home. The neighbors saw the teacher outside, but they thought that this woman was trying to break into the home, so they called the police. Well, when the police got to the house and spoke to the teacher, they instantly realized she was not there to rob and break into the house, but something wasn't right. So the police decided to break into the home to check and to see what's going on. The first thing that hit the police when they entered the home was the smell. As they entered the home further, they heard music playing from the ballroom. They had to pass through the kitchen to get to the ballroom so they had to step over piles of dirty clothes in the middle of the floor. One of the officers noted what appeared to be dried blood stains smeared all over the floor. Well, they reached the ballroom. Police found Mrs. List and her three children. Each had been shot in the back of the head. John Jr. clearly received the most shots. Each of their faces had been covered with a piece of cloth. Well, they went upstairs into the attic and officers found John's mother, Alma List. She had been shot in the head again through her eye. Her head was also covered with a piece of cloth. The officers found a note. It was addressed, quote, to the finder, end quote. It told of where certain documents could be found and would explain the entire scene of the house. These supposed documents were written by John List, the missing husband and father. One letter was also written to his employer. It told them how they could win new clients and how to finish up some files that he'd been working on prior to their disappearance. What? There was also a letter that specifically explained why he committed the murders. Well, John had written another letter, again, to his pastor, Eugene Renwinkel of the Redeemer Lutheran Church. This letter also explained his motives. He felt that in the 1970s, it was a sinful time and that his family was beginning to succumb to temptation, especially his daughter. She expressed interest in a career in acting this was an occupation that John viewed as being particularly corrupt and linked to Satan. That is just so odd. He also told his pastor that by killing his family before they had the opportunity to renounce their religion, he was saving their souls and sending them directly to heaven. The police did find a picture of John List, and they posted his face all over the media. But he was never found. Eventually, the case went cold. The case quickly became the second most infamous crime in New Jersey history. It surpassed only by the kidnapping of the murder of the Lindbergh baby. That might be in a future episode, stay tuned. A nationwide manhunt for List was launched. His car was found, as we mentioned, parked at the International Kennedy Airport, but there was no record of him taking a flight. The police checked out hundreds of leads, again, without any results. An investigation revealed that John had been suffering financial problems due to several reasons. He had lost his job as an accountant. Heavy expenses were related to their huge home and family problems caused by his wife's supposed mental illness brought on by advanced 
syphilis. 18 years later, on January 1st, 1989, well, his case was not forgotten. It was featured on the TV show, America's Most Wanted. A viewer recognized him and called the authorities to Richmond, Virginia. What they found was John was found living as a man named Robert P. Clark. He was leading a completely normal life. The show had used a forensic artist named Frank Bender, and he had previously had great success in helping to capture aging fugitives and identify decomposing bodies using creative sculptures. Bender's work was part art and part forensic science. Well, he had to imagine what an aging John List would look like. So Bender consulted a forensic psychologist and created a psychological profile in addition. He looked at photographs of John's parents, and predicted what he might look like as he aged. Well, the image that Bender created, he gave John a receding hairline and a sagging jaw. Bender also added the type of glasses that John had previously worn. Well, when John List was arrested, he was wearing the exact same type of glasses. 11 days after this case was broadcasted on America's Most Wanted, John was arrested, again, living under the name Robert B. Clark. 18 years, he was on the run. He'd been living in Denver, Colorado, Richmond, Virginia. He moved around. He also remarried. He started a new life with a career as an accountant. April 12th, 1990, he was convicted in New Jersey and count five of them of first degree murder. On May 1st, 1990, he was sentenced to five life terms in prison. John has never expressed any remorse for the crimes. And even during an interview with Connie Chung in 2002, this is what he said, quote, I feel when we get to heaven, we won't worry about these earthly things. They'll either have forgotten me or won't realize, you know, what happened. I'm sure that if we recognize each other, that we'll likely recognize each other's company just as we did here when times were better. I knew it was wrong. As I was doing it, I knew it was wrong. I finally decided that the only way to save them was to kill them. It was my belief that if you kill yourself, you won't go to heaven. So eventually I got to the point where I felt that I could kill them. Hopefully they would go to heaven and then maybe I would have a chance to later confess my sins to God and get forgiveness." End quote. John died in prison on March 21st, 2008. He was 82 years old and died from complications from pneumonia. His body was not immediately claimed, though it was later claimed and buried next to his mother in Michigan. That is the story of John List. Thank you for sticking around for another episode of Danny After Dark. Do you have a question or a comment on the case? Leave it down below. Let's be interactive. Do you have a suggestion for a case that you would like me to cover? We'll leave it down below and you may see it featured in a future episode. Until next time, remember, we don't live in darkness. Darkness lives in us.